Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's and in today's video we're going to be looking at the steel chainsaw that came in, the customer bought in um, five or six items of stuff needed to work on. So far we've got the head trimmer working, the other chainsaw working, the, the multi-tool working, the brush cutter um, needs a new carburetor, still got to wait for contact from a customer yet for that one, but it has got a steel chainsaw, I have no idea what's up with it, I don't even know if it runs, doesn't run, no idea at all. So we'll have a quick look at that, see what's, see what's occurring and then uh, we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this steel chainsaw. Right, here's the steel chainsaw. I'm just gonna try and fire this one up again to see what happens. It's been left for about an hour. Just inquisitive. Right, and here's a steel chainsaw. Uh, the chain's half hanging off. Um, it's in need of a sharpen. Not quite sure what's up with it, to be fair. There's fuel in there, which is a good sign. Let me check the uh, oil. No oil, which is a bad sign. Let's have a little look here. So we've got, choke it. There's no, no yet, yeah, there's a decompression valve. Here's there. Let's see what happens. Like that fired. Okay, so I purposely didn't give the old chainsaw the beans because um, you shouldn't fire a chainsaw up from cold and put it straight to work anyway. But also the chain is dangerously loose. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to fire it straight up with that chain as slack as it was. So it come off and hit me in the hand and that'd be the end of that. So let's get a good clean up all over, a sharpen. It runs, it runs relatively sweet. Um, the brakes are all working as it should do, and then we'll go from there. Right, first things first, I want to take off this um, guard on the side here Ooh, to um, clean out all what's inside here. This is, it's all really fine chippings, which is not a good sign. The saw may fall off once I take it off. That might be a, a good thing to do, just spend a bit of time with him just to um, teach him the, the ins and outs of how to start a two stroke machine. So lots of burning around here, which is which is common with no oil going through this system. The cog looks fine. Yeah, a little bit of wear, which you'd expect with a machine of this age, but not excessive. So number one, good all round clean up. I'll give it a scrape off, give it a clean, blow off the old air compressor. Do it on that and do it on the inside of a cover as well, which has got bits and pieces in there. And then I'll come back to you all. Okay, that was a bit messy. Blowing stuff everywhere. But uh, now it's a lot cleaner and I can, I can now see what's going on. <clears throat> what year is this? 2008 model. Which is good, not too old. These saws are quite nice actually, to be fair. Quite like them. So that's all now clear and all clean as it should be. I've done the cover, just gonna quick look at the blade. Blade's not warped at all, any way, shape or form. And just gonna run my fingers down the edges. There's a few high grooves need to be need to be filed off. Yeah, all down through here. So we'll bring the engine out the way. <coughs> And we can concentrate on 
on this alone. And I want to get my uh, chainsaw filing kit, which is over the other side. Actually, we do have a steel one, which is quite convenient. Now, just you need to err on the side of caution here because these bars can be really, really mega sharp. And just here, when I'm tapping, that should be flush. So you've got burrs all the way down. Other side, not too bad. So I dare say this has been used one way only. And all we're gonna do is with the file, run it downwards. Nice and flat, keep the strokes nice and consistent. And all you're looking to do is to remove the burrs off of the edge of, of, the, of the bar. Keep the file as flat as you can. That's that side. You don't want to be touching this with your bare hand, which can help it. I've got a rag in my, in my left hand, which I'm holding the bar with. You could be wearing gloves. But I don't. That's got in. Come down there. What's it end like? Not too bad bit there. I didn't I did this side I didn't do this side little tiny bit there I think we call that a day on that one so now I'm just going to run the cloth down to get rid of the old, the old filings turn it over new bit of cloth the same and wipe any of the filings off out of the way. So that's that. That looks good. I'll clear the bar out. Just start to come down the rain again. That's our next lot. I'm going to run the air compressor down through here now just to uh, make sure we've got all the stuff out. Clear out these awning points. Get a quick clean, I'll come back. righty -o. that's the, um, let me put you up in the air a bit. That's the bar now cleaned, I'm happy with. Let's bring the saw back in. Tip her up on the side. So trying to find to see if there's actually an end. I think that's the way he had the bar up before, so it's like divot in it. So I'm going to rotate the bar to give it a fresh side to work on. So that's it onto there like so. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to get my grease and just want to grease up the bar. Grease point just here. One there. Run out of grease already. Shouldn't have done. A little bit of a push, just plenty in there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. A bit of grease. That'll help the chain a bit later on. <coughs> yep. Okay, uh, that's the side I decided to use. That one goes into there. You grab the chain, which doesn't look too shocking. If you just inspect it, it's 25s, uh, 75 on the runners. Teeth, I mean, not too bad. It's not been, it's not been hit, which is good. We've got a bit of a kink in the old chain. Just simply 
stick that out by doing that. Put the chain on. Put them the right way around, of course, which would always help. Which is going to be that way. Put it onto the cogs. Top of the bar first. Start at the bottom, both sides. Bit fiddly wiggly. That's that one. To adjust this back a smidge. Better. That way we can see what's going on there. Put that all on. Put that all on. Happy with that, happy with that. Get the guard, wherever the guard may be. Guard on. Give me that. Do them up. Just loosely to begin with. If you don't want too tight, because we'll adjust the chain there. This is just to hold the uh, hold it into place so that the bar doesn't move off. Uh, or to points too tight, and then we can now adjust the chain up by tightening the screw, get it roughly into, into position where you want it. It's going to be about there, right? Now, before we tighten up any further, what I do with all my saws, and I think this is a, a mistake a lot of people do make the saws. Is that there's a bit of play in that bar? You see that play? Now, if you tighten it up where it is now, okay. Let's say the chain was tight; it's not quite tight yet. But if you tighten up where it is now, as soon as you hit your log, your first log, that will push that bar up, and you'll get you'll get slack. So if I tighten that chain up now, let me bring it down here so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me drop you down. Right. So I'm going to tighten that chain up. Right. Not too tight, just where it should be. The chain shouldn't be really, really tight. It should be just about, about perfect there, yeah? A bit too much. There. Well, that's fine. Now, if you tighten that chain up where it is now, when you lift that, when you, you don't lift that bar, as soon as you hit your first wood, see that slack? No slack. Slack. No slack. Slack. So what I do with all of mine is I tighten my chain up where it needs to be. And uh, we'll see a bit more yet. I'm happy with that. Now what I do, put a cloth down, put that just there, and now I will now push the chainsaw down so that, that bar is forced up in the air. Okay? So a little bit of slack. Just force that chain, force that chainsaw down. So that all that slack is now up the top, you see it? Now you tighten your, your chain up fully, and then you keep that pressure on, and then you tighten up your guard. Doesn't have to be really, really tight on these. It has to be on there, but it doesn't have to be stupidly tight. Now, by doing that, as soon as you hit your first your first bit of wood, that bar cannot go any higher than what it is. And that chain is, I would say, yeah, that's on there, perfect. If you don't do that, your chain will always be slack. So now I'm going to go for a sharpen. First, I'm going to grab my um, markers. I should have one up here somewhere. Here is one. All I want to do is just mark one of the teeth. This is a metal marker. Three passes is more than adequate. then we just start to rotate these back as and when you uh, 
you go. There's a little tiny line just here. That's the line you want of the angle, but it's also on here as well, 30 degrees. So that's actually, that tooth is actually super duper well out. So I want some, more than three grinds, I'd say. That's better. I might just change to that other file, see if that's a better file for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a better file. It's actually now cleaning the actual tooth itself. So we want that part of the file which is slightly too big. So pull that back onto the next. Done that one. And just keep pulling it back. That one's done. You can see which one you've done, which one you haven't. These teeth are absolutely near, near enough level. So they're, they're absolutely right out. So we are actually now reprofiling this whole chain. I've been sharpening chains for quite a few years, so um, I actually have my own my own techniques and my own. I know exactly where to file and where not to file, and my angles. I sharpen lots lots of chains by hand out in the field. This chain is actually in worse condition than what I thought it was. Good, not a good chain at all. Actually, could do replacing, but we we'll give it a go. We we'll see if we can't get it just to just to do something. Try and find your space to go. I said better. Yeah, I might have to check that guard. Doesn't have that guards on there fully either. Here comes a mark, so we know that that is where it needs to be. Like that's that side done. Now what we're going to do? We're going to rotate the saw round. To the other side. Somewhere in there. I'll bring it around this side. Somewhere in there, be good. Get my metal marker. Put on that one, that bit of first. one we're done I'll go back a bit more done that one done that one that one's bad that wasn't too bad this type of chain doesn't seem to be too bad actually done done not done Done. Quite 
was bad. That was really bad, that one. Done. And uh, logs for his log burner around by his house. Uh, done, not done. And there's the first tooth just there. So that's that done. Now I want to check the riders, see how tall they are in comparison. Here's my flat file. Not too bad. Seems to be okay. you doing they're okay so that's that done got to fill it up with oil just want to double check actually whilst we're here just want to double check because that is making a bit of a clonking noise um, when you uh try and turn that blade just want to double check that is actually on the cog because it should run a bit freer than that and i think it's just slipped off a cog somewhere it's just not quite sat where it should be, so let's just investigate it. The bar shouldn't move too far because it is under tension. Make a bit of a weird noise. But we'll see what happens when we fire it up, eh? Right, so let's put this back on, tip the bar back up so it's nice and tight, it doesn't move, and then uh, we'll go outside and we'll fire it up. Actually, before I do that, I'll put some oil in it. The last time I spilled oil absolutely blinking everywhere. But I haven't definitely got enough oil to actually spill any this time, so I've got enough just about half a tank, which should be sufficient. Pick some more up. All right, that, should, that should be enough. How much? Right. Let's give it a go. Chug it, decompression it, brake on. That fired. On the older model, on the newer models, they actually uh, come off on their own. Okay, so that's the little steel chainsaw all up and running and as it should do. It's got oil in it, got petrol on it and it disperses all as it should do. I've just tried cutting a few branches what I've got here. I haven't got anything substantial to cut, but um, it will work fine. Um, the blade is, is the chain's cutting as it should do. Nice big fat chunky chips of sawdust as it should do. 
Um, not a lot wrong with it. I might just have to educate the man on how to start, stop um, two-stroke engines. I think that's where he's going wrong. Um, I don't think um, there's a lot wrong with a lot of his machines. It's just literally he just he doesn't know quite know how to start them. So he's wasting his money by buying new machine, new machine, new machine, when he can just run the old stuff. So that's good. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Mixed Mowers. I've uh, quite enjoyed today's video with regards to a chainsaw. Any comments, positive, negative, you know where to stick them. Um, don't forget, if it's your first time watching this channel, um, tap the old subscribe button if you like and give the old bell a nice good whack. Uh, and uh, until then, take it easy. Do you feel the